You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of, you know me on, some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So it looks like my interview with Sedge went over quite well. I got some good numbers from that. Um, got a some decent amount of comments, and well, I'm I'm uh, planning on doing uh, another one with another dev. I won't say who, but I've got a few on my mind who I am uh, considering doing an interview with. But anyway, for right now, it's going to be uh, just normal schedule. We'll just go, we'll just uh, be focusing on grinding out some of these more uh, some of these visual novels. All right. Anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy. We'll entertain you for the next twenty minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Perhaps some light might might help it unfold again. I push the flower into my pen and follow the wolf outside. We hop over the steps and Vool leads me towards the village center. As usual, zip it, piglet. Hmm. I nod in agreement and silently follow. The cool morning breeze pushes the silk dress against my skin, and I have to admit, I begin enjoying how sensual it feels. I don't think I wore silk before. I'm not surprised royalty dressed. I'm not surprised royalty dressed in it exclusively. It's so comfy. I'm enjoying my garment so much that I only notice that now I only notice now notice blah that only now I notice how the wolves scurry about. With Vul walking beside me, there are no evil eyes or growls from yesterday. I will have to keep that in mind when I'm out alone. Those cowards are only barking when I'm out with them when I'm without an alpha at my side. The tribe is very much up and running, with different shops open and bustling with activity. As we pass the stockades, I notice someone arguing with a fishmonger about their wares. In fact, you can smell the argument from afar. You dare say, you dare to say my fish is old? Old? It's downright rotten! It stinks up the entire place! Come here and say it to my muzzle! Looks like it's about to turn into a fist fight! I whisper softly, covering my nose in full chuckles. Yeah, wouldn't be the first time. We speed it up lightly, slightly, trying to escape the undeniable stench of old fish. Definitely not a catch of the day, that's for sure. I mutter nasally as, as I'm pinching my nose. More like catch of last week. The black wolf laughs, visibly holding his breath, and I join in. It's nice to share a joke. We leave the built-up streets of the we leave the built-up streets of the village, and the houses become scarcer and scarcer. The bad stench is left behind, and we're again able to breathe freely. It would seem that we've arrived at the opposite edge of the settlement for Maddox Cottage. There's a clear path here, but no houses around, and we continue walking beneath the woodland canopy for a short while. Eventually, my nose is hit with a different yet somewhat familiar smell, reminding me of plain cornflakes. An involuntary smile appears on my face as I reminisce about eating a bowl full dunked in cold milk. Vul notices and gives me a rather unsettled gaze. You're enjoying this? Oh, yes, it's the smell of breakfast for me. Breakfast? Oh my. The black wolf grimaces. Smells like pig chow to me. And again, you are a piglet. Ha <laughs> ha! As we approach the solitary homestead, roofed with what appears to be moss and grass, the smell intensifies and becomes less pleasant. It's sickeningly sweet now, overpowering even, and I finally cover my face again with a shawl. A chubby wolf is standing in front of an open kiln, topped with a massive copper vat. It boils and bubbles, the source of the aroma permeating the air. Tibble! Oh, hello there. Got all them dad bods on display. Vulgor! The wolves exchange cordial greetings, but the stranger quickly centers on me with a rather, uns rather unsettled expression. They see you've brought a visitor. A creepy-looking thing. Don't act like you haven't seen him at the feast. Fuck, he's right. I recognize the male. He's one of the many onlookers Tano peddled me to. He even scored a petting on the um, he even scored a petting of my head, which he now relives again through gentle ruffling of my hair. Ha <laughs> ha I, I did, I did. The wolf concedes through a chuckle. I have a weak spot for creepy crawlies. And he calls me an insect. Anyway, what can I do you for? I've come to restock Rannick's cellar. Ha! Huh, again, he had to stop raiding his supplies. I second that. Had not for Vool, we wouldn't have been here in the first place. Why are you bitching about it? Keep your bi keeps your business running, doesn't it? Fair, fair. The male nods again. So, what do you need? The usual? Nah, I need the stout Rannick likes. You have a spare barrel? I do, but that stuff ain't cheap. It's the one that goes to the villa. I know.
Come on. One second, guys. It's just the position of this thing. Okay, there we go. More room. I know. It would seem you can take a wolf out of the out of the palace, but you can't take the palace out of the wolf. <laughs> Rank has some refined tastes. I also need moonshine, the drinkable, the drinkable one, triple distilled. Ooh, excuse me. Is <laughs> someone feeling generous today? Tybalt laughs and walks towards this cottage. Once he disappears inside, I look to Vool with a mixed expression. He seems nice. I say it with slight irony. Keep quiet. The black wolf brushes it off and keeps his eyes drilled in the doorway. Eventually, the chubby wolf strolls out, holding a small clay flask in his paw, similar to the one to the one at Rannick's house. Nah, fuck your little bottles. Give me one of the big flagons. Vul protests, pointing towards the workshop, and I blink in shock at the sight of them. There must be five liters at least! An entire flagon! You need to pace yourself, lad. Agreed. I won't be taking drinking advice from a village drunk. Drunk? Ha! Tiplet takes the insult surprisingly well, simply laughing it off. I just need to make sure my wares are up to scratch. You don't see me taking a bite out of every slab I hand out. Meat is different. It's primitive and vulgar. He protests, pointing to the bubbling vat. This is art, boy! Boy! Very well. I'll remember that the next time you'll come around my shop. Vol sniggers. Now make sure to give you the most primitive and vulgar cut I can find. Vindictive like your mother, I see. My eyes widen, and I hope there's more of their banter to come, but the wolf simply walks towards the assortment of barrels resting against his house. Anyway, one barrel and one flagon. You have that whelp take care of it? He pats one of them, nodding towards me, and I swallow heavily. In your dreams, old man! And break his arms, or worse yet, break the barrel? He can carry the moonshine. Kind of useless as a ward, isn't he? The wolf mutters, narrowing his brows as Vul approaches him. Ella seems like you're taking it out for a walk. Unless you'd shove that flagon up my ass, I don't see how else I'd carry it all, all the way back on my own. Ha ha ha! Fair, fair. Both wolves grab the topmost barrel and struggle to move it down. As it looks somewhat unstable with just the two of them, I rush to their side and, with what little strength I have, try to prevent the thing from tipping over. See? Not as useless as you'd think. The barrel thuds against the ground, and Vul tilts it, tilts it on its side, rolling towards the pathway. Anyway, I'll have some of the same for myself. I'll just come and fetch it later. You're robbing me of a good week's work, boy! Tybalt laughs, walking beside us. Vul stops, the Vul stops the roll at the kiln, straightening up and rummaging inside of a small pouch at his back. He reveals a silver octagonal coin, flipping it to the chubby male. One Vithir's token should cover that. I huh. Tipple is caught by surprise and nearly drops it. Fit theirs, you say? Well, I'll be damned. In that case, next week on me. He laughs merrily, patting the black male. Not that I mind, but why? I have a long tab outstanding with that bastard. Ha ha ha! Shoving his own token into his muzzle will get him off my back for the foreseeable future. Just stop drinking his wine and you should be fine. Vol shrugs and I nearly let out a chuckle. Vulgar, I've been brewing beer and booze since you were a pup. Wine is all I have left to enjoy. Then get used to sucking his dick. After all, he owns all the wine-producing burrows. Tybalt erupts another bout of laughter. He reminds me a bit of Vithyr. Clever bastard. He controls the wheat, too, so my trade is heavily reliant on his. Wait, they own the burrows? Not the ones that Sylvan folks live in, I hope. Each wolf has his place. Said the village butcher. Between you and him, you control two-thirds of the food around here. I guess my mother knew what she was doing. Set you up for life, that bitch did. My eyes open wide at the comment, and despite it being made in clear jest, Wool doesn't seem to take it kindly as his form slightly tenses up. I understand you're bitter, but she's still my mother. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't want to break your jaw on top of your broken heart. I blink at the last comment while the brewer laughs. <laughs> no offense, meant. One day you'll understand, lad. You will. Trust me, that day already came. Huh. Now I'm really curious about Vul's mom, but my rampant thoughts are brought to a halt as Tibble's paw lands on my shoulder. Mind lending me a paw, wee bugger? He opens a small jar filled with what looks like a cross between an acorn and a Brussels sprout. Despite the off-putting appearance, they smell quite lovely, like fresh-cut grass. 
See those? Fetch me a pawful from the shed. He joins his paws together and points to the wooden hut nestling against his house. They'll be in the ba in the big bags like those. His paw then indicates the big sacks of wheat, and I simply nod. Where's your son? Shouldn't, be, shouldn't he be helping you around? My son? Ha! He's the one who needs all the help he can get. He's most likely chasing ghosts through the woods again. I open the door with a slight creak and disappear into the storehouse. It's filled to the brim with different barrels and bags. Is it still that bad? Honestly, he never really recovered. The pillow-shaped ones are obviously filled with grain, but there are four big Santa-like sacks at the very back. I untie one of them and take a sniff. Bingo! He's a wolf without a purpose or a place in the tribe. He gave up on himself a long time ago, and so I followed suit. No point setting yourself up for another disappointment. It's hard to discern anything over the potent aroma of boiled wheat, but there's an inkling of scent of a scent somewhere here I very much want to get to. It's like the smell of the forest, very akin to what Rannick smells like. I retrieve one of the green sprouts and take a deep breath. Nope, it's not that one. I'm sorry to hear that. I really did try. He was just... That's fine, Vool. It's not your responsibility to carry other wolves' weight. I untie the second bag and immediately smile. This is the one. This one smells like my wolf. I grab a handful as requested and walk outside. It was never much of a warrior, nor was he especially spiritual when you come to think about it. I'm not surprised he ended up how he did. I've decided to give him until the equinox. If he doesn't get his shit together, I'll send him off. Where to? First to his mother, and then to it, then it's the ancestor's will. I'm done with being the village laughing stock. I allow their exchange to finish before presenting my find to the male. To my surprise, his snout twitches and he lightens up. Damn, he's got a good nose, that one. Would be my first choice of hops, but might be exactly what I need. He puts the sprouts into the jar and rubs his paws together, causing Vool to look curiously at the bubbling vat. What's that you're brewing? A new blend. I've got bored cooking up the same old stuff. I dissed off some recipes, but found nothing remotely inspiring. So I'm winging it. The bunnies had a very odd year, and their hops are of a varied quality. I've been tinkering with the different ratios. This one's quite fl quite floral. Speaking of... He looks to my pen and points at the dandelion. That gives me an idea. I haven't done dandelion wine in quite a while. Oh, you can make wine of the stuff? Of course! Quite tasty, too. Very much akin to mead. Tybalt smiles in satisfaction. Used to be Aileen's favorite. A brewful cask full of the stuff back in the day. Those were the times. I can see Vool's expression sour, and he readjusts himself uncomfortably. We better get going. I'll fetch my stock before the feast. He mutters, bending over the barrel and giving me a telling look before rolling it off towards the town. Ha! Sure thing! That's an oddly abrupt end to a conversation. But I simply grab the large flagon, bow respectfully to the wolf, and rejoin Vool at his side. I'm glad I'm not the one rolling that keg, but the moonshine isn't exactly light, either. I cradle the bottle against my chest, and we walk for a while in silence, allowing some distance between us and Tybalt's house. Finally, when we're in the clear, I cannot contain my curiosity any longer. Uh, who's Eileen? Don't go there, piglet. Vul mutters, and although he doesn't sound angry, he's quite stern. Forget that name, and if you value your life, don't ever bring it up. I take it she's your mother. I conclude to which he only scoffs. You're deaf and dumb. She's not my mother. Okay, so what was that all about? Look, it has nothing to do with me, and certainly it has fuck all to do with you. His voice takes on a more serious tone. We don't talk about her in this tribe, and definitely do not mention her to Rannick. I'm pretty confused about this warning, but something tells me it's a good idea to listen. From context, I get a feeling that Eileen might be Rannick's mother, making the whole conversation more troubling. Something must have happened. Something bad. You're overthinking shit again, piglet. Vul mutters, drawing my attention. He clearly picked up on my shift of mood. S Sorry, you're right. I chuckle and seize this opportunity to tease him. One second, guys. Let me uh, see if I can text B. There you go. So, Tybalt was in love with your mom. I assume unrequitedly. Fuck knows. The black wolf shrugs. Mother liked attention, just like all females do. She shed a lot of wolves on. She she Oh, she shed a lot of wolves. She let a lot of wolves on. It was just the last one to get that. I almost want to say that it's quite ironic coming from him, but I decide not to. Where's your mother now? She moved to be with her current mate. In another tribe? 
Nah, in another village south of here. Just as I thought, there are more places like this in the forest. Despite the appearance of being quite settled, they don't seem to be staying in one place for long. Do you miss her? Miss her? The wolf scoffs. She hardly could shut up, constantly yapping and growling, kind of like you. I was glad to see her back after my great feat. Once she was gone, I could finally have some peace and quiet. Do you visit her? What for? I seem to be amusing him with my line of questioning, and the mockery in his voice becomes apparent. I don't know, because she's your mom? What am I, an unweaned pup needing a tit to suckle on? He gives me a telling look, insinuating that's exactly what I sound like to him. I roll my eyes. We all have our lives, Piglet. Just because you have a pup doesn't mean you stop living. I've got my life, she's got hers. She did, she did her job as was expected of her. In fact, she did it better than most. She earned the right to move on. No denying that, he's doing quite well for himself. <laughs> she can definitely be proud of you, that's for sure. I smile reassuringly and manage to draw another subtle tail swish from the male. We enter the village in silence, as it's not safe for me to continue talking. The wolves pay us no mind, despite the loud creaking of the barrel across the pathway. I guess it's another perk of being in the company of the most notorious wolf in the tribe. The wolf seems to be on the lookout, obviously worried we might stumble upon something, upon someone he'd rather avoid. But so far, so good. As much as I hate doing it, my hands grow rather sore, and I have to plop down the jug to take a few moments rest. The wolf stops his roll and looks to me with clear annoyance, but all I can do is shrug apologetically. It carrying five liters around is not something I'm used to. As I rub my arms to do away with the cramps, I notice Tano in the distance. He has a rather mischievous smile upon spotting me and begins heading in our direction when he suddenly notices Vool. His quick and comedic change of mind comes with a little surprise and the wolf marches off in the opposite direction. I chuckle and pick up my jug, nodding to Vool so, we, so that we can continue. What's so funny? He looks confused, clearly unaware of this little near miss. Nothing. I mutter in amusement. I decide to let the white wolf off the, ho off the hook. When we arrive at the cottage, Vool brings the barrel to a stop, and I observe as he stretches his muscular back. He arches himself a few times with a satisfied groan, clearly getting rid of a cramp, and then points to the shed. Grab two thick logs, long enough to scale the shed, the steps. I nod and walk over there, rummaging through the various pieces of wood. Once I return with his quarry, he grabs the logs and places them over the stairs, creating a ramp. Again, I admire his body tense as he struggles slightly to push the barrel into the onto the wood, but he's strong enough to make it happen. The gravity gives in before his bulging biceps, and the wolf simply rolls the barrel up the stairs as if it was a trifle. You done gawking? He sniggers, noticing my intense gaze, and I shake my head as he resets the barrel to an upright position. Put them back. I do as asked, and once I return, he's already moving into the kitchen, wobbling it from side to side. I like his ingenuity. It would have probably... Uh, I would have probably given up unable to roll the damn thing through the narrow door frame. He stops at the table and moves the old barrel out of the way while I close the door. And once he set the new cask in its place, he releases a long sigh. What should I do with this? I shake the jug. Put it in the cupboard. I thought we would split this. It's quite a lot of booze. Considering the frequency with which we now visit this house, I'd say it's adequate. There's four of us, after all. True, I suppose. I smile and approach the cupboard. Maybe unintentionally, but he just counted me as one of them. As I hide the jug inside one of the compartments, Vool lifts the empty barrel as if it were an oversized mug and chugs down the remaining liquid. I watch as some of it spills over his chin and drips onto his pecs, slowly trickling down his chiseled torso down to his underbelly. Damn, that's hot. Fuck, and I am really pent up. I need to stop objectifying people. What? And uh, uh, nothing I blurt out, locking my embarrassed gaze with the floor, causing the wolf to do the same. Oh, sorry about that. He responds, noticing the puddle he created and, mistake, and mistaking my fluster for annoyance over the spill. It's fine. I'll take your advice and do a bit of housekeeping. And now that I know where the spring's at, I can also do Brannock's dirty laundry. I try not to linger in his awkwardness. It was a joke, although I'm sure he'd appreciate it. The wolf scoffs, rubbing his, rubbing his chin clean. Well, uh, it'll give me something to do and occupy my mind. It's just... I pause, looking around. Just what? I'll have to hang it dry, but I didn't see any laundry racks outside. The wolf smirks and approaches the cupboard, opening the middle drawer and removing a large loop of rope. Here, Rannick uses this. He passes it to me and I immediately recognize it. I was bounded with Rannick's clothesline? Um. Ugh, you're so clueless at times. You span it between the trees and the cottage. My confused expression is again misread by the wolf and I chuckle. I know what to do with it. 
Then what's the problem? It's just a bit absurd, don't you think? Last week you bound me with this, and now I'm going to dry laundry on it. I shake the rope in my hand. Life's full of surprises, isn't it? He shrugs, but is unable to deny that the situation is somewhat funny, and finally lets out a subdued, subdued laugh. Once our joint merriment subsides, he grabs the empty barrel by the rim and approaches the doors. Right. Gotta go. Piglet, you sit tight. The guards won't be giving you any trouble. If they do, flash them my token. Should set them straight. He sneers in amusement, and I almost blush, reminded that I even got it. You haven't lost it yet, have you? No, I have it right here. I point towards the cupboard. Good. Just stay clear from the village today. Why's that? There's word that Dron was going around asking questions. I wouldn't like you to run into him, not while he's excitable. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can, or a tip, as it's also known as. It always helps. It's very much appreciated. But anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!